Bisbee from Skill Builder and welcome back to my shed. I'm doing another product test and this time I'm looking at chainsaws. First time we looked at chainsaws and in particular we're looking at the Makita chainsaw. Now a lot of people won't know Makita for their chainsaws. They think of them for power tools but not chainsaws. Some years ago Makita bought a company in Germany called Sax Dolmar and they made some very nice chainsaws and Makita wanted to get into this business so what better way to get into it than buying an existing company that's already an expert in the field. And Makita brought their own engineering disciplines to it so there's a joint venture between the Germans and the Japanese if you like. But the chainsaws are still made in Germany in that Dolmar factory and I think They've got some very interesting innovation. So here it is. This is what all the fuss is about. Now Makita make professional saws. They also make entry level ones for the occasional user, the hobbyist. This is one from the professional range. A little bit more expensive, but I think well worth the extra money. I think if you're going to buy a chainsaw, you might as well buy the best that you possibly can and that way it's going to give you years and years of service this is made for everyday use so it's pretty rugged i'm just going to run through the features with you just to show you what we've got here first thing is the anti-vibration springs instead of being rubber which are sometimes susceptible to uh, rot from uh, fuel and oil and everything else they've got steel springs in here to uh, take the vibration away from the the bar from the handle when you're holding it um, and they've also got in here the filter which simply unclips there's no screws to undo nothing like that so you can take that filter out clean both the sponge filter and the outside filter brush that off it's an easy clean filter if you're working in damp conditions you're always in the rain and so on and you want a nylon filter it's actually better in wet weather so you can swap that over for a nylon filter if you're working in the cold inside the hood here is a baffle now that baffle simply slides out and if you turn it round and put it the other way around you can have that little hole there now that hole allows the air from the top of the engine just as it runs across top of the engine and it warms it up slightly and that draws the air into the carburetor through the hole just to pre-warm it and the idea of that is that that will stop any icing up on the carburetor but quite honestly for me if it gets that cold I'm not out chainsawing. So switch around here we've got our choke position which is obviously when we start it we give it a couple of pulls or maybe just one pull with a starter and then what I do is I go down to there and give it a, a go. You've got a nice wide handle to put your foot in there when you're starting it. So best to start it on the ground rather than try to do that one-handed pull start that all the clever tree surgeons do. While we're talking about the starter, this is an easy start. And the reason that it's an easy start is because it's got a double spring in there. As one spring winds up, the other one unwinds so you've always got this balance rather than pulling against one spring you're kind of spring assisted if you like so whichever way you go with that in or out it's got one spring that is helping operate the other so clever bit of kit a nice little idea because a lot of people do have trouble starting them we've got the fuel and the oil tops here both of those are easy to undo. They've made those so that they don't jam on. Sometimes you get problems with them jamming on. If this did over tighten and you wanted to undo it, you can actually just use the multi-tool to do that. But quite honestly, most of the time, you shouldn't really have any problem with that jamming on. Nice rubber seal in both of those. I can smell the petrol already. So. Pretty standard on a chainsaw is the anti-kick bar here. Now that is a chain brake basically that allows the chain to lock on. But what happens is that if you do get a bit of kickback on the nose here, if you're plunging that into something you get a bit of kickback, the inertia, the sudden movement of that bar coming up will actually make this flick on. 
So it's a safety feature. A lot of people don't quite understand what it is, but of course, also, because you've got your hand on the front here, that will also stop the chain instantly and could save you some injury. But if you're not used to chainsaws, I do recommend that you go on a course and you get some lessons. We've got a nice dog tooth bar here, up and down, which is like a double bar, so that gives you plenty to lock into the bit of timber. Pretty standard on here, two nuts to uh, hold the bar on. And I don't think there's anything particularly that you need to see here. But obviously when you change the chain over, or when you assemble it for the first time straight out of the box, then you'll want to set it up. Now, it goes over that pin as all bars do, but once you've done that, you can just check the free running of the chain. Make sure it's the right way round, obviously, so that the cut is coming backwards. Then we can just pop on the cover, spin the nuts round, but let's not do the nuts up too tight at this moment, just enough to hold the bar up in place because we want to check the tension of the, the chain. Now we can adjust the tension of the chain. We normally want the chain to just be pulling out the bar but not enough so that it can actually clear the bar so that those teeth are always in it. So we simply adjust the chain, tighten the chain like that or loosen it just by turning that screw there very easy to do and when we've got the tension right once it's got a bit of oil on it it'll spin around a lot more easily than it does at the moment and then once we've got the tension right tighten these alternately so you get a nice even tightening on them so we're good and tight we've got 50 to 1 mix going into this because obviously the concern nowadays everyone's concerned about the emissions so when you put the fuel in you must measure it don't try guessing it because that's where a lot of problems with two strokes start is people guessing the oil mix not getting it right there are perfectly good measuring devices around now so that you can get that two stroke mix spot on or of course you can use the sachets and use a good high quality oil either the one from makita or the one from steel whichever but don't use the cheap two stroke oils because Really speaking, you, it's, again, it's the emissions thing, but also you want to protect this engine, look after it as best you can. When it comes to the chain oil, I know some guys use used engine oil because it's cheap and freely available, if you like, but uh, it's a bad idea because it is carcinogenic. Um, it's got all kinds of nasties in it. The stuff that I use is the biodegradable, vegetable-based oil, if you like, which is a lot kinder to the environment. You're splashing this stuff around on the forest floor and there's a lot of wildlife there, so you don't want to do them any harm, you know. So use a good uh, bio-based oil if you like. That um, doesn't do any harm and you'll be fine. So, nicely balanced, obviously. Not too heavy. This is a 50cc, so plenty of, we've got a 450 bar on it. You can put a longer bar on it. And if you put a longer bar on it, you might want to adjust that oil flow because the oil flow is set for this bar. But if you want to adjust it, all you do, put your screwdriver into the slot there and turn the screw and that will adjust the oil. So you can soon tell whether you're using too much oil or too little oil on a chain and just give it a tiny tweak there and that will adjust it so that you can get it pretty spot on. Another good feature with this oil pump is the fact that it only pumps oil when the chain is moving. Some other chainsaws just pump oil all the time when the engine's running. So that's it. Not a huge test, but we took a tree down and we're going to be doing a lot more logging with it in the future. When the cold weather starts and we're loading up those wood burners, this thing is going to be working several days a week. I'm Roger Bisbee. Thanks very much for watching. And don't forget to come back soon because we've got lots more going on. Press that subscribe button. Keep up to date. Loads of building related stuff coming up. Tool tests, all the stuff that you love. So keep in touch.
Thank you.